Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be looking at a production subsidy, but here's the thing. We're looking at it in the lens of international trade or within the lens of international trade. What we are not doing in this video is looking at a production subsidy under the lens of microeconomics. You see, in microeconomics, when we do production subsidies, we basically ignore all international actors, okay? We don't say that explicitly when we're teaching microeconomics, but that's what we're doing, okay? We're just basically looking at a domestic market and a production subsidy. That's not what's going on here. In this particular video, we're saying, okay, let's open up the world. Let's have an open economy. Let's allow international actors. And we're gonna do a production subsidy in that lens or within that lens of international trade. And in this particular video, we're gonna implement a production subsidy for a country that is a net importer, okay? So what does that mean that they're a net importer? The price world is below price autarky, okay? Price autarky is where these two curves intersect. That would be the price that would prevail if they did not engage in trade. However, if they open up to trade, and we're gonna have them open up to trade, this is the price that would prevail in the domestic economy, the price world, okay? Where is this price being set? Because it's not being set by these two curves. It's being set in a world market. Oftentimes we would draw a world market to the left and have a supply world, not supply domestic, and demand world, not demand domestic. And where they intersect, that would give us the price world. And again, in this particular situation, the price world is below price autarky, that means that the domestic producers, for the most part, don't have a comparative advantage. A few domestic producers do, okay? Some domestic producers actually are able to produce at a lower cost per unit than price world, but not enough to satisfy all of domestic demand at price world. This is the quantity of goods demanded domestically at price world. This is all they can supply. They can only supply this because those domestic producers have a marginal private cost that is less than price world only for this amount of goods. So what does that mean? It means this gap right here is being filled by goods produced internationally, okay? This would be the imports to this domestic market. All right, let's go ahead and bring in our production subsidy, all right? And the first way I'm gonna do it is shifting the curve, which here at Acom Busters, we're not a huge fan of shifting the curve. So eventually I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I'm gonna handle it through a wedge that I think it's gonna be a lot more clear. But the conventional thing you're gonna see in textbooks is they're gonna shift a curve. They're gonna bring in a production subsidy. And what does that mean? Well, we're gonna give money to the producer for producing the good. It's a production subsidy. It is not an export subsidy. We're gonna give money for every good produced. That's what a production subsidy is, okay? Every good you produce and sell, we're gonna give you money, okay? Not just your exports. Again, production subsidy. So what does that in effect do? Is this curve, which is based on the marginal private cost, okay, to the domestic producers. Well, the marginal private cost is in effect going down, okay, which is causing the supply curve to shift to the right. So this is supply domestic with subsidy. Again, why is that happening? If we're gonna give you money, we're effectively reducing your marginal private cost per unit produced, right? So that's what's happening right there. Now, how do you handle this graph? At this point, the graph, I think, becomes very confusing for students. One of the big reasons is students' eyes are drawn to intersection points. There's an intersection point and there's an intersection point, neither of which is really important for what we're gonna do. Here's what we're actually supposed to do when it comes to this graph. We're supposed to say, okay, I'm actually gonna go where that new curve is intersecting price world and I'm gonna look at that size of the subsidy, okay? There's the size of the subsidy, of course, right? The vertical distance between this is the per unit subsidy. So again, the trick is if you're gonna shift a curve, go to where price world and the new supply curve are intersection. There's my per unit subsidy, okay? Now here's where it gets a little bit interesting. I'm now going to do what we call splitting peas. The price the producer is gonna make is gonna be different than the price the consumer is gonna pay, okay? Price, consumer, domestic. So the domestic consumer is gonna to continue to pay price world, which is a big takeaway. Production subsidies do not hurt domestic consumers. That's a really big thing, okay? Their price is not gonna go up. They're gonna pay this amount, but the government's gonna come in and hand the producer, you know, that amount, which is about that amount. So I'm gonna draw this over, price, 
producer domestic. Let's do that one more time. The domestic consumer is going to pay this amount. And then what's going to happen is the domestic government is going to hand a per unit subsidy of this amount to the domestic producer, which makes their price producer this vertical distance, this much from the consumer, this much from the government. Well, when that happens, okay, their price producer goes up, they're going to supply more. Now, I want to really focus you on something. When I put that higher price producer domestic, I'm now seeing the subsidy as raising the per unit revenue for the producer. So I am now back to focusing on the original supply curve, okay? And this is how textbooks are gonna handle it. They're not always explicit in what's going on. So let me say that again. Yes, I can see it as a reduction in the marginal private cost. And so I do this with the curve, all right? And that does help me a little bit, okay? It allows me to find this dot and I can add on that subsidy, which allows me to find that dot. But then what we generally see textbooks do is they say, okay, what is, what's going on here? Well, the price producer, the producer per unit revenue is gonna be greater than the price the consumer is gonna pay by this amount. And then they do all their analysis based on that original demand curve, because again, they're now seeing it as an increase in price, not a reduction in cost. So they do this little switch on you and it's confusing. In fact, there's a good chance you're confused right now, but here, let me just kind of show you, kind of end this analysis for this graph and then we'll go with an easier graph, all right? So here's what we're gonna say. This used to be the domestic producer surplus because price producer domestic used to be down here prior to the subsidy. So this triangle right there used to be the producer surplus. But now with the price producer going up, price producer going up, we can say, hey, that is gonna be extended. It's no longer this triangle, it's now a bigger triangle, which means the producers, the domestic producers are gonna gain A, okay, area A. However, the government outlay was this amount and how much are we gonna produce now? Well, we're gonna produce that amount right there or we could say that amount, they're the same quantity. We're gonna produce that amount, okay? Or we could say that amount, either one works. That's the per unit subsidy. And so this entire rectangle is the government outlay. So I'm gonna put that as B. And then when we do our welfare analysis, we say the following, consumers are not impacted at all. So there's no delta in their consumer surplus when a production subsidy is implemented, got them taken care of. We only have two other actors we're really focused on. That's the domestic producers. Well, we know they're gonna gain A, and then we got the domestic government. Their outlays are gonna be A and B. Their outlays are gonna be negatives in our welfare analysis, because those are outlays. That's money going to this versus money that could have went to something else. So we'd say negative A and B for the government outlay plus A for the domestic producer surplus. So the dead weight loss would be B. And there we go. But it's a tough model. In fact, if I was to increase the size of the subsidy and draw my new supply domestic with subsidy there, I gotta tell you guys, many kids have a hard time. I'm gonna go ahead and show you really quick what we would do in our analysis we would go, we'd ignore that, we'd ignore that. That would be the point that is so important, right? Price world, new supply curve intersection. We would draw it all the way up to the old supply curve right there. We'd bring it across and we'd say, okay, price, producer, domestic. And then we would say the following. A would be, hey, it used to be that triangle, now it's that triangle. That's their producer surplus. That'd be the gain in domestic producer surplus. And then the government outlay, that's the per unit subsidy. What's the quantity supplied domestically? All the way to there. So guess what? B, B, A and B, this entire rectangle is the government outlay. And again, what would be the day we lost? It would be B because domestic producers gain A. Uh, domestic government loses A and B, meaning in total B is lost to the domestic um, social surplus. Okay, what do I think is a better way to do it? A much simpler way, don't shift the curve, okay? Generally here at Econ Busters, we're not big fans of shifting curves when we do government intervention like subsidies and per unit taxes. And this is a per unit subsidy, so let's go ahead and use a per unit subsidy wedge. There it is, right there. I'm gonna bring that wedge in. 
the base is going to be price world okay that's going to be price world the height right there from this dot to this dot is going to be the per unit subsidy of course measured in dollars per unit and that hypotenuse right there that's going to be supply domestic okay so we're just going to slide it in so whatever your per unit subsidy is there it is whatever your per unit subsidy is that's the key and we're just going to slide that thing in let's say it lands right there there it is that's where it goes in fine we're good we've got this what is going to be our analysis we're going to put price producer domestic no chance of double counting the subsidy because we never shifted a curve okay so what's going to happen this was the producer surplus domestically it's going to increase oops to that triangle a little bit messy but anyhow it's going to increase to from this triangle to that triangle so they're going to pick up that a what's the government outlay well there's the per unit subsidy we're producing all the way to there so per unit subsidy we're going to produce all the way to there so a and b that's the government outlay. What would be the dead weight loss to, or at least the loss in social surplus to the domestic uh, economy? It would be B, right? A is picked up by the domestic producer. A and B is lost to the government. Consumers didn't lose anything. The consumer price remains down here. So what's gonna happen? That would be our loss. And if I wanted to increase the size of that wedge, okay, right? Increase the size of that wedge, it's still really easy to do. So I'm just gonna, increase that per unit subsidy make it bigger right i'm going to slide that new triangle in let's say it lands right there that's the per unit subsidy bring it down awesome pp domestic what happened in this situation the triangle expanded from right there to right there the domestic producer picked up A, they still got this, and they're picking up that A. The government outlay is this entire rectangle, A and B. What would be the loss to domestic uh, surplus? It would be B. Let me do one more thing, okay, for both top and bottom models, because I haven't done it yet. Hey, what would be our imports, okay? Well, this would be produced domestically. This is how much is gonna be produced domestically. Produced domestically, all right? How much? Remember, the consumer is still facing price world. So there you go. That's quantity demanded, produced domestically. That's my imports right there, okay? Over here, again, production domestic, quantity demanded domestic, and those are now my imports, all right? Hope that made sense to you. Again, I really think the cleaner way to do it, just use the subsidy wedge, bring it in, it's gonna show us how much is gonna be produced domestically, the difference between the base right there, or you might call it the height, I guess, the per unit subsidy, the height of that triangle, and that demand domestic, there's our new imports. Hope it makes sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.